everyone. Welcome to this week's Karma Cards. I'm glad to be with you today. So let's start with what's happening energetically right now. Solar energy wise, we've had a, a couple of flare ups, but not a lot going on. Not like the weeks we've prior that we've seen before where we were having like just one after the other after the other. It's a little quieter right now. So we're going to look at the astrology. And right now the astrology this week is a little crunchy for people. It's a little crunchy. I'll explain it to you. So it started with Mars squaring Pluto yesterday, which was Tuesday the 11th, I believe is the date. June 11th. Mars square Pluto. Why is this crunchy? This is crunchy because Pluto is known as the power purge planet. It's here to help us empower ourselves, and it will reveal to you anything that is keeping you out of your power. So whether it's behavior, whether it's thoughts, whether it's um, dynamics in relationships, whatever it is that's keeping you out of your power, Pluto is going to bring it up. And since Pluto is now in Aquarius, it's very forward thinking. It's keeping, it's looking at the things that are keeping you out of your future alignment, who you're meant to be, your future self, where you're going, right? Where you're heading to. The things that keep you out of that are what are going to be brought to the surface. And it's squaring with Mars. So a square in astrology brings tension. It's two planets that are clashing. I always think about it like squaring off, like a boxing match, right? They're sort of creating this tension, this fight. So Pluto wants to bring forward things that are impeding you and show it to you. And Mars, Mars wants to move forward and get things done. It is the action-taking planet and it can get a little aggressive. So when it squares up against Pluto and you're being shown the things that are getting in your way, the, the patterns that you're holding that are keeping you back, the, the glass ceilings you build for yourself, it can bring out this sort of aggressive tendency. It can feel like some, you're trying to stop me instead of you're trying to help me is how Mars sort of interprets that energy. And then it can create this sort of tension and frustration and anger and you might even, you might see that towards yourself to some degree, or you could see it like in relation to other people. It's it's not a great square when it comes to dealing with other people because it tends to create a lot of clashing. And it's usually being aware of someone else's patterns kind of coming up in your face and feeling like it's impeding you. And that gets that sort of negative tense energy. So that was yesterday. And people were definitely feeling it. I heard from a lot of people that that's there just something just came up that felt icky and caused them in a lot of ways to feel doubt or confusion or go into scarcity and lack. That's a pattern I saw a lot too. And so we just want to watch that because it's still kind of active right now. It's going to pass. That energy will pass and soften. But right after that on Wednesday, which is today, June 12th, the day I'm recording this, We've got Mercury is squaring Saturn and Mercury is in its home sign of Gemini, which means quick moving. I want to learn things. I want to get it done. I want to check out everything that's going on. I've got ideas and I want to get them going. That's Mercury. Very fast, very like uh, I've already got it and I want to move into it where Saturn's like whole slow your roll. You need to pause and think about this. Is that is that a good plan? What's your what's your breakdown? What's your analytics of this plan? Right? The, Saturn can feel sometimes like that. Like a I'm trying to think of a character that we're all kind of familiar with, like in a trope of movies. Saturn can feel like what the movies or television makes DMV workers seem like, right? Like just slow, like maybe intentionally getting in your way or slowing you down or forcing you to go at their speed rather than your speed. Like you want to get in and get out and they just, they don't want to be there, right? So they're just going to torture you as much as they feel tortured. That's sort of the energy when you've got this Mercury squaring Saturn is Mercury wants to go and Saturn's making them stop and slowing them down. Now, even though that's how it feels, the dynamic is actually quite different. If you were to step back and look at it from a bigger picture, Mercury in this 
scenario would be like a student and Saturn would be like a teacher checking the work of the student, right? Like not there to stop you, but checking you and making sure you're following all the steps to get to the result you want. And so Saturn is seen as a malefic because of that ability to sort of slow things to a halt and make it feel like things aren't moving forward. When another way to look at it is it's giving you the gift of being thorough and checking your work and making sure that your your uh, conclusions are matching the the trajectory you're trying to go to and so there's a gift when saturn interrupts mercury because mercury especially in gemini is so fast that mistakes are easy to make it's easy to miss something while you're trying to do everything and saturn helps slow it down but it doesn't always feel great and a lot of times people people can misinterpret this energy as if something is stopping me or I'm doing it wrong or I'm not getting the result I want so something's wrong they're they're misinterpreting it as something has failed when really it's a slow down and assess what's going on not a you're doing it wrong that's not how it's meant but that's how it gets interpreted many times so Again, this week has this sort of crunchy, like start, stop, traffic jam type of energy to it. And then on Saturday, uh, Mercury is going to make a Kazemi with the sun in Gemini. And that's going to feel like an aha moment. So when it when the planet makes a Kazemi with the sun, you're getting like to the heart of the sun and the, the sun sort of amplifies the energy of that planet so there is a sort of like a mental breakthrough that we feel towards the end of this week but we're still in a square with saturn that planet uh, mercury is still squaring saturn so you're gonna get an aha but you're still gonna feel like i can't make it move so you might feel like i've got the answer and yet things still don't move you got to trust the timing here saturn is a planet about timing and when saturn interrupts it's just saying to you not yet Hold it, wait, there's a better time for this. It's not a no, but it is a stop and check yourself. And then when I say, well, then when I move out of the way, then it's a go. And usually because of Saturn's intervention, what we end up getting is longer lasting results because you had to fine tune so much more when Saturn was in the way. And then when Saturn moves, you get that forward momentum again but better results because of the fine tuning. So it's not a week that feels really great in terms of how things are moving. You might feel like communication is stilted a little bit or miscommunication or misunderstanding is a little um, more amplified at this time because like I said, Mercury being in a square, so there's tension and, and it's easy for us to feel challenged by these placements, but we just got to hold on and we got to focus in and remember like what's meant for me is coming, right? So we, I, I feel like one of the big patterns and here's the message from the team is getting out of this lack mentality. Lack is an illusion. Now I'm saying this to remind myself just as much as I'm reminding you because I'm just as susceptible to these lack patterns, but I've been really working on it and I get very blessed getting to work with others because it gives me a lot of like clarity. I'm like, wow, if you're stuck there and I perceive you as doing quite well, then this is a mindset. This isn't about what is happening to you. And that's what happens with lack is a lot of times the lack that people are perceiving isn't even present. It's not. They're perceiving something that they're worried or anticipating is coming down the line, but it's not here yet. And all it's doing is robbing your peace of mind today, right? So one of these things I feel like this week is meant to get us to do is sort of tune in and get clearer on our illusions around lack and scarcity because there's so much more available to us than we, I think, hold conscious. And, and this is why, because again, when we're in our conscious and waking state, we're in more, we're more left brained when we're focused on something where we get tend to be analytical, the left brain, especially 
likes to compartmentalize, it likes to box, it wants to know what it is and it put it aside. So it's not going to constantly hold everything is like, look at this and look at this over here. Once it feels like it's got it handled, it wants to push it to the back and kind of forget about it and focus on whatever the new problem is. The left hemisphere loves to focus on the problem because it's a problem solver. It's analytical. It's like an investigator, right? It just wants to know why isn't my life perfect? Let me hone in on the thing that's not perfect and really laser in and see if I can work that out so that I can figure it out, box it up, put it in the back and keep moving forward. And, you know, I, I love strategy. I love problem solving. I love investigating. I think these things are very necessary and valuable, hence why we have a left hemisphere. The problem is that if we're relying on that, if we're living over in that side, we get caught up in its its type of program, its type of thinking, which is that all I'm focused on are the problems and I'm not living present. I'm looking for the things that are keeping me apart from what I perceive I want and I'm trying to work those out, but I'm not present with what I have. I've already figured that out and I'm forgetting it. And that's what creates that sort of taking for granted energy. And so this week, this sort of traffic jam is meant to sort of get you to jar awake and go, oh my God, that's a horrible feeling. And and why would I believe I'm going down this dark hole when everything's actually better than I think it is? Um, so things are, again, the illusion is being lifted. You're meant to see that things are working out much better than perhaps you have assessed and you need to get present and this is what I love to do a present moment checklist and this is how I help myself when I go into the spiraling illusions that lack and scarcity can create because it's easy to convince ourselves that you know we're going to be so so far out of money or out of food or lose shelter or lose a job or lose a relationship. We're get, it's easy to do that. It's easy to create this story, believe it or not. And the thing that sort of counters it and the left hemisphere responds to is proof. The left hemisphere will cool it if you can give it proof that you're right and its little lack story is wrong. And so how you do that is to get present with with yourself and I do the present moment checklist. So I point out things that my left hemisphere cannot deny are facts. And the facts are, I am talking on technology and communicating with people. That implies that I have not only the technology I need to do that, but I also have the um, internet connection that allows me to make that happen, right? I have a roof over my head. I have a nice comfortable bed. I have food in my pantry and in my refrigerator. I have emergency food. That means I've got more than I need, right? So again, there's money in the bank. Yes, of course, we all want to have more and we would like to feel more secure, but there is some there. There's money in your wallet, right? There's there's a car. There's gas in that car. That car is functional and it can take you places. You're healthy. Your body is physically healthy. The people you love are safe, and with you and physically healthy. Your animals are with you and you get to take care of them and meet their needs and they're healthy. I mean, the things that are happening for you that are already working that you're not worried about is what you're focusing on with your present moment checklist. And what you'll find is as you state these things out loud to yourself and notice them, you're tracking them and as many as you can, your left hemisphere kind of zips its lip because it's like oh there's too many points she's got too many points here it's too many facts she's right there's not a lack at this time there isn't scarcity at this time and so therefore it quiets down and it allows you to sort of recenter get calm and find that place of peace again and this is just a technique I find really helps people snap out of the illusion that they are telling themselves Right. If your if your business is having a bad day or two, that doesn't mean your business is failing. It has, it's having a bad day or two. It's had a bad day in the past, and you got through that. Right. It doesn't mean your business is over. And so, these are just some of the things 
that we need to point out to ourselves to help reconnect to our power because when we tell these stories of lack, our power goes away. So with that, let's look at this week's karma cards and see what they have to add to this. Right, if you're new to karma cards, let me quickly show you how these work. I have three decks here, planets, signs of the zodiac, and the houses of astrology. And I've already asked my team, what is the message you have for us this week? And I've got two sets of answers, a set in red, which are action related, and a set in blue, which are outcome related. And the way that you play is you tune into your beautiful intuition and feel what is the guidance you need this week? Are you looking for action-related guidance? Or are you looking to see how things resolve over the next seven days? And of course, you can always choose both. And while you're choosing, let me tell you the timing for this reading. This reading is for June 12th through the 19th. And the flavor of this reading, we've got the sun. The sun is that light of realization, right? It's like shining a light on everything. So we've got the realization here. In the sign of Leo, which is all about claiming your power back and standing in that sovereign space of leadership, that you are the creator of what you are experiencing. In the seventh house, now the seventh house deals with partnerships and relationships, so how you are in relation to others. All right, for those who are choosing action, your spiritual action at this time is to demonstrate leadership diplomatically. What's really interesting is based on what the message that came through from the team, this is really kind of talking about being diplomatic with your thoughts. So again, one of the ways that we're going to help ourselves right now is we're going to switch over to, you know, facing the truth of what's right in front of you and what is working, but we're not going to do it through shaming ourselves or belittling ourselves for going into a story. We're simply going to show ourselves that we can come out of it. And by doing that, those around us are going to benefit and also witness how to get out of this story. Now, it again, with that Mars energy, with the intensity of this week, it is easy to kind of go into a... <laughs> A harsher leader mode right like knock it off do this do that and it's again remembering that the people around you who you're seeing struggle you've also struggled and what works for you right what works for you is probably somebody who is gentle and understanding and receptive you know ready to help but not pushy and so that's the energy they're asking us to embody this week mental action at this time realize the creativeness of relationships when i hear this i immediately think you chose this person for a reason there is a divine creation around all of our relationships especially those that are very close relationships the the really prominent ones in our life there are divine contracts around this and we already knew what we'd be kind of like struggling or wanting to work on before we came here. Not to say that we knew every moment and the little details and nuances about it, but there are some themes. Like if you are have a theme of like going into a downward spiral, that's something you needed to work on, or you get avoidant and, and want to run away if you get really combative. There are themes. And creatively, we got together in spirit with those we're in relationship now, and we agreed to help each other out. And usually we would choose relationships that had a compatibility. Like if one person is highly avoidant, the other is kind of combative, like in your face, right? And they, the idea is to kind of show each other there is a middle road that completely hiding isn't going to help yourself and being completely aggressive won't help you either. But that there is a middle path and where you can find that ground where one person's strength can hold the other per the patience of the quiet person can hold the intensity of the dominant person and the dominant person can hold or forge forward allowing space for the quieter person to move with them but in a a space where they feel more protected, right? And so we, we do these dynamics in spirit. And so that's all it's saying is like, recognize your, your contracts with people, you know, whatever you're going through at this time, even if you're in a conflict of sort, there's something here. 
that you already agreed to work out. This is helpful, even in the conflict, if you can understand how this conflict is showing you the work you still need to do. And if you can become cognizant and aware of that, you can see how like creatively it was done, how it was designed by both of you to help you see each other more clearly so that you could move out of these old patterns or any way that you're self-restricting and move into a place of power and empowerment with each other. Physical action at this time, act like a leader, do what you want to, and get a fair deal. <laughs> so I'm really tuned into the do what you want to part because that one, I was like, what do you mean by that? And what they're saying is do what you desire to do. What is the direction you desire to go? And do you really desire to go into a negative spiral around lack or scarcity at this time? Or do you desire to create something, move forward, enjoy your life? That's what they're focusing on here. So what is it you want? Do you want to freak out? Probably not. So act like the leader, do what you want. Well, I want to stay calm. I want to stay grounded. Okay, do the things that you're going to need to do to get in that place. If your nervous system is going off the rails right now because you're stressed out, what helps de-stress you? You're going to have to take the reins here and focus on that. That's how you're going to get a fair deal. And the fair deal in this case is you're going to be able to hold space or create boundaries if necessary with other people and say, hey, we're not going, you know, we have a dynamic of getting stressed out or bunched up around bills, right? I don't want to do that this time. I want to stay calm and grounded because I know that worrying is actually not going to help us get to the solution. It's actually going to keep us apart from our critical thinking. So what I want to do here is I want to work on this with you, but I want us to regulate our nervous system first. This is what I'm going to do to help me stay calm and grounded you know, what, what can you do to help yourself be in that space? Approaching situations like that, I know it sounds idealistic, but you might be surprised that other people kind of need help remembering to do that too. As long as we're not coming at a place where we're, we're coming at it being condescending, but we're remembering that like this is a struggle, even for you sometimes it's a struggle. But if you've got your head sort of clear enough that you can see that this sinking in your struggle isn't going to help you swim, then by connecting with that and honoring taking care of yourself first, it's going to help the other person realize that, oh wait, I can do that too. So now let's look at outcomes for the sun in Leo in the seventh house of relationships. The spiritual outcome at this time is the creation of self-confidence to create balance. Beautiful right? So it's right there. It really is right there. We have an opportunity to feel better. Focus on the feeling you want to experience, not on the reaction. So what they're basically telling us is if you can get into a response state rather than a reactive state, what you're going to create is you're going to feel better about it. You're going to feel more confident in yourself because you're like, hey, look, I, I could have freaked out. I thought about freaking out, but I decided not to. I decided to help myself stay grounded. And in doing so, I was able to achieve the energy I need. I can look at these things. I can look at the issues that are coming up and I can be rational about it, which creates that sense of balance. A lot of times when we get thrown off by lack and scarcity, it feels like someone tipped our boat and like we're falling overboard. It doesn't have to be that way. So no matter what we're presented with, whether it's, you know, um, taxes or whether we're presented with a client wanting to end their services or returns or whatever it is that you're dealing with, especially in a financial sense, know that getting reactive to it might be the impulse, but you don't have to go there. And in order to get the answers, the solutions you're looking for, having that self-control over whether I react or respond is going to make a huge difference. You're going to win by taking a moment to settle yourself first. Mental outcome at this time, the gaining of respect for or from taking a chance on cooperation. Again, it's easy to, when we're in those stress states, when we're in that lack thinking or scarcity to sort of... Mm, 
want to figure out who's to blame here sometimes um, or whose actions were the faulty actions, right? Not necessarily like you did this, but if you had just X, Y, Z, then we could be in a much more secure place. So again, that comes from a reactionary state. When you focus on cooperation first, when you focus on calming yourself and choosing how you're going to react and focusing on how you'd like to feel, there's this amazing energy. And again, I sometimes I have to point out that the people who are listening to this message, you're the leader here, right? It's because the message is being given to you. You tuned in, you felt a need to listen. And so the team, the universe is saying to you, you're the leader. You're going to be the instigator in this deciding whether you react or respond. And therefore, you have the power right now to take a chance on cooperation, to take a chance on being like, what if we don't get reactive and scared? What if we stay focused and balanced? What if I start within it within myself? And when I'm confronted with an opportunity to practice, like my partner freaking out or my friend or whoever it is that I can choose to take those deep breaths, center myself, think about how I want to, what I want to feel and experience and start communicating from that point of view. The other people who are going to be experiencing you are going to be kind of in awe. It's like, wow, you know, you're right. We don't have to go there. What? Thank you. Like, thank you for having a cool enough head in this moment to calm me down. I do feel like there's sort of this appreciation and respect for you being able to uh, grab the reins here and be like, we don't have to do it this way anymore. Physical outcome at this time, things brought to light or life resulting from the impressiveness of your partners. Again, we contracted on a soul level with these people. There is a good chance especially during these times that when you're having these conversations, they're going to surprise you. You might think, <laughs> you might think they're going to go down a certain road and they might react first because again, it takes a minute to catch yourself. A lot of times we'll react before we can catch ourselves, but you might find that they actually catch themselves and start to like reroute. Right. And so, in this period of time, there is, again, like stop and go traffic. It's a little bit bumpy. It's a little bit crunchy is the word I keep hearing. There's a crunchiness to it. But on the other side of it is a desire, a higher desire to get over this on some level. And so even if you have to go through the sort of crunchier parts this week where it's like, ugh, miscommunication, rough beginnings, uh, reactivity, Give it a minute and still come back to this place of how do I want to feel? How do I get responsive? What, what helps me calm down so I can respond and not react? Continue to practice it. Even if you feel like I already, I already boffed it this week. I already had the argument. I already had the frustrating situation. Continue to try and center yourself, create the balance, focus on how you want to feel and move into a place of response. I think you're going to be quite surprised at how the people around you, especially connected to the situations that are bringing lack and scarcity in the mind, if for them or for you or both of you, that, that you might be surprised that they get on the, they get on board with you. Whereas maybe you would have thought I'm going to I'm going to ride this train alone. I'm going to be the only one working on this. I think you're going to be surprised that they actually do get on the train with you and work on it with you. And so it's just having that faith and recognizing that the opportunity is still here right now, even if the worst moment has already happened. Go back to how do I want to feel? What brings me into balance so that I can be responsive? And then bring it to the other person. And you're going to find that Again, there's mutual cooperation, there, a balance returns and maybe a deeper understanding, deeper respect and a deeper appreciation from each other is the result of it. And with that, I am sending you so much love. Mwah.